Good evening. Welcome to the Anaheim Elementary School District January 20th board meeting. I am AESD pre uh, board president Mark Lopez. I call this meeting to order at 6 p.m. This meeting is being conducted telephonically and by means of live video broadcast on our Anaheim Elementary YouTube channel for members of the public. Board members and cabinet members will be video conferencing together to assist in managing the logistics of the meeting. For English, you may connect by phone as follows. Call 520-365-0215. When prompted, type in the PIN 719-562-133-POUND. Para español, puede conectarse por teléfono de la siguiente manera. Llame al 262-891-8854. Cuando se le pida, presione el PIN 543-990-079 y el símbolo POUND. Any member of the public has an opportunity to address the board by submitting comments by 12 p.m. on Wednesday, January 20th, 2021, online via an electronic form as outlined in the public speakers portion of this agenda. Submissions will be read aloud during the board meeting by the board president or designee. Let's begin with the board roll call. Board member, Dr. Paolo Magales. Here. Board member Ryan A. Rellis. Present. Board member Juan G. Alvarez. Present. Board clerk Jackie Philbeck. Present. And I am, again, board member Mark A. Lopez present. Uh, item 1B, public speakers for closed session items. Agenda, uh, there are no public speakers tonight. Can I get a motion to recess to closed session? So moved. All right, moved by Alvarez, seconded by Rellis. Uh, I think that was actually Dr. Okay, seconded Dr. by Dr. Dr. Rellis. So moved by uh, board member Alvarez, seconded by Dr. Paolo Magales. Any discussion? Okay. We'll go roll call vote. Uh, Dr. Paolo Magales. Aye. Thank you. Board member Rellis. Aye. Board member Alvarez. Aye. Board clerk Philbeck. Aye. I also vote aye. Passes 5 0. So we'll adjourn to closed session. Thank you. All right, Dr. Downing, it looks like we have all board members accounted for. We'll go ahead and start the regular meeting. All right, welcome everyone. Good evening. Welcome to the Anaheim Elementary School District January 20th board meeting. I'm AESD board president Mark Lopez. I call this meeting to order at 6.31 p.m. Uh, sorry, a little tardy on my first meeting. Uh, this meeting is being conducted telephonically and by means of live video broadcast on our Anaheim Elementary YouTube channel for members of the public. Board members and cabinet members will be video conferencing together to assist in managing the logistics of the meeting. For English, you may connect by phone as follows. Call 520-365-0215. When asked, type in the PIN 719-562-133-POUND. Para Español, Puede conectarse por teléfono de la siguiente manera. Llame al 262-891-8854. Cuando se le pida, presione el PIN 543-990-079 y el símbolo POUND. A uh, few reminders, uh, housekeeping items. Please mute your microphone when you join the meeting. Unmute when you are announced to speak. And uh, this is a reminder to remember that it is important to honor everyone's voice while they are speaking. Therefore, please limit 
chats during presentations. Uh, board members, tonight all voting will be by roll call vote. When motioning or seconding an item, please state your name. For any items being discussed, please state your name before discussing the item. Thank you. Item 3A, let's begin with the flag salute. Uh, Dr. Downing, if you please. Yes, please place, stand, place your right hand over your heart. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Dr. Downing. Uh, introductions and roll call, item 3B. Dr. Jose, or sorry, Dr. Paolo Magales, board member. Hey everyone, good evening. Ryan A. Rellis, board member. Hello. Juan G. Alvarez, board member. Present. Jackie Philbeck, board clerk. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, everyone. And again, I am Mark Lopez, board president. Dr. Christopher Downing, superintendent. Good evening, everyone. We have Dr. Mary Grace, our assistant superintendent of educational services. Hello. Dr. Dina, or sorry, not doctor. I was sorry <laughs> about that. I was on a roll with the doctors. Uh, Dina Melland, su uh, assistant superintendent, human resources. Good evening. Sorry for the promotion there. Jesse Chavarria, assistant superintendent, administrative services. Good evening, everyone. Tracy Golden, our Senior Director of School Safety and Operations. Good evening, everyone. Iris Camacho, Senior Administrative Assistant. Hi, everybody. Mary Madrigal and Alina Avilar Roque, Interpreters. Hi. And finally, Janice Cato, Technology Support Technician. Hello, good evening. All right, good evening, everyone. Thank you. Uh, item 3C, report of closed session items taken. There are none. Item 3D, adoption of the agenda. Item 8B.4 was pulled at the request of administration prior to the adoption of the agenda. Can I get a motion on the balance? So moved, Relis. Moved by Relis. Second, Philbeck. And seconded by Philbeck. Any discussion? Hearing none, roll call vote. Trustee uh, Magalis? Aye. Trustee Relis? Aye. Trustee Alvarez? Aye. Board Clerk Philbeck? Aye. I also vote aye. Uh, passes 5 0. Uh, item. 8B4, that was, okay, so that was pulled. Uh, item number, sorry, item four, special order of business. Spark of Love campaign toy donations. Lindsay Young, interim fire marshal on behalf of Anaheim Fire and Rescue. All right, and uh, board president, I will uh, give a brief uh, comment and then we will turn it over. So uh, the Spark of Love is an annual tradition with the Anaheim Fire and Rescue Department to help families in need during the holiday season by collecting and donating new unwrapped toys or sports equipment for children throughout the city of Anaheim. This year, Anaheim Fire and Rescue delivered toys and gifts to the Anaheim Elementary School District that were distributed to students and families in our McKinney Vento program. We appreciate the support and generosity of Anaheim Fire and Rescue on behalf of our students and families. And this evening, we are joined by Lindsay Young, Interim Fire Marshal, who is representing Anaheim Fire and Rescue. Interim Fire Marshal Young, I would like to present the Certificate of Recognition on behalf of our Board of Education and our stakeholders, and thank you for your amazing support of our district. And with that, I'd like to turn it over to you for any comments. Thank you so much. I, I'm, I really appreciate the certificate. Um, you know, this year had, we all talk about it nonstop. It had just 
innumerable challenges um, and hurdles we had to overcome. And one of them was uh, this program, which we really do enjoy um, so much. The distribution this year, um, something that was very challenging for us. Um, and we were able to collect um, just shy of 2,000 toys. That's all due to the, the generosity of our community. And um, without the, the assistance of um, the district and being able to get those toys into the hands of the kids that needed it most, we really couldn't have done it. So this was a partnership and I, I really do appreciate something that my team always said was they, we had to just be flexible and on the fly and um, the, the district staff and was so um, welcoming and um, very flexible in helping us meet our objectives and get those toys out. So thank you very much. Thank you on behalf of our district and our president. I'm sure the board members would like to add a little comment. Okay, I will open up to any of the board members if you would like to make any remarks. I just want to say thank you so much. I, I know a lot of the kids' hearts are all happy, and, and thank you from the bottom of my heart. I'd like to just, you know, repeat what Dr. McCullough said. Thank you very much for providing this for our uh, students, especially some of our most needy students here in AESD or McKinney Vento. Um, you all have a lot of on your plate already. Um, and, you know, to add distributing toys as another one of your many talents. So uh, thank you very much. I'll just uh, tag on on that and say we're so appreciative. We thank you really, as Dr. McGall said, from the bottom of our hearts and and it's greatly appreciated, uh, not just for this, but I've had experience with you in other ways through our sister city program with Anaheim and how wonderful you are with giving our students that come over to visit when they were coming over tours and just the outreach that you provide for the community is outstanding. And so thank you for all of it, but especially for this, because this really hits home for us and our families. And so um, we're just really grateful. Thank you so much. Yeah, I'm not sure if you were able to participate in the distribution, but um, when you, whenever you participate in things like this, the expressions you see on a mother's face or like a sibling who opened the door and receive these gifts is just, uh, beyond comprehension, the the joy you bring to families when you do projects like this is immeasurable. So, anytime we can uh, serve our community in this capacity and bring joy to a child is highly appreciated. We thank you so much. Thank you very much. I just want to say I know that this is not the reason why you do these things. Uh, you don't do it for the recognition. You'd probably be fine if we didn't recognize you for it because the people who really uh, want to help our community the most. They like doing the things behind the scenes. They don't want to do it for, uh, you know, coming before the board. But thank you for taking the time to be here to do, uh, to receive this well-deserved recognition. So thank you very much. Um, we'll give you a round of applause. Thank you for helping our community. My pleasure. Thank you very much. And and our chief, uh, Pat Russell, did join us tonight too. Um, chief, did, did you want to um, say anything to the board? Uh, no, I would just echo what was already said. Thank you very much for the collaboration and allowing us to partner uh, with you for this very worthwhile event that we've done for several years. And I would like to recognize uh, Fire Marshal Young and Natalie Rudemaker, our external affairs uh, coordinator, for they worked as tirelessly to uh, to get this done under very challenging conditions this year. So thank you to all for uh, allowing us to do this. Thank you, Chief. All right, thank you again. And moving on to item 4B, winners of assembly member Tom Daly's art contest. We have Laura Houston, teacher on special assignment curriculum and instruction. Welcome, Laura. Hi, good evening, everybody. I am just going to take a moment and share my screen. Okay, so each year, assembly member Tom Daly sponsors an art contest for students in kindergarten through sixth grade who go to school in Anaheim and Santa Ana. And this year's theme was something I look forward to doing after COVID. Um, 
AESD had first place winners in grades first through six, which is amazing. And over 80 students submitted digital pictures of their artwork to me. And then I forwarded the pictures on to assembly member Tom Daly's office for judging. And all of the winners that will be recognized tonight have already received um, some formal certificates and brand new iPads. And before I uh, introduce the students, I would like to thank assembly member Tom Daly and his donors and staff members, especially Ms. Nadia Viafana for helping me to facilitate this art contest while on distance learning. Things are different this way. <laughs> I would like to thank the parents and teachers for supporting the arts. And as we all know, the arts can be very therapeutic and can help our students communicate their feelings through creativity. AESD has participated in six art contests so far while on distance learning, and we have more planned. So let's meet the Anaheim Elementary School District winners. So first, congratulations to first grader Julian from James Gwynn Elementary School. And I'm gonna tell you a little bit about his artwork. So Julian wrote, when the coronavirus is over, I want to go to the beach. And you can see he drew a beach scene that shows storm clouds with lightning and rain. And then this giant sun is about to push those clouds away. Uh, what an appropriate metaphor for the world right now. Nice work, Julian. And then um, his sister actually won uh, for second grade. So uh, congratulations to second grader Emma from James Gwynn Elementary School. And uh, let's look at her artwork. Emma said, um, I will go to a hill with nice bugs after, after the pandemic is over. And Emma drew a happy scene with a butterfly, a bee, and a centipede playing freely in a field. And we can see Emma and her brother holding friendly bugs in their hands. So great work, Emma. And then congratulations to second grader runner up, um, Mia from James, also James Gwynn Elementary School. And here we also see her twin sister, Ellie, proudly holding Mia's art. And let's take a closer look at her art. Uh, Mia wrote, after COVID, I will spend time with my family, especially at Christmas. And Mia painted her smiling family inside their cozy house near the Christmas tree. And the sun is shining outside and the skies are blue. And this is a very beautiful picture, Mia. I know some of the families are watching. And next, congratulations to third grader Sophia from Anaheim Elementary Online Academy. Sophia created a light up display about Disneyland. And you can see her display a little better in this picture. And Sophia wrote about how difficult COVID has been. And uh, she wrote, for me, the first place I want to go when COVID-19 is cured is Disneyland. She said, I love all the rides. I painted this display for you to visualize some of the fun times you may have had at Disneyland. And she wrote, I hope this puts a smile on your face. And Sophia, this definitely put a smile on my face. Thank you. Very good job. And uh, next we have Yoltsin. Congratulations to fourth grader Yoltsin from Edison Elementary School. And if you look closely at the mask that Yoltsin is wearing, um, he was the winner of the Anaheim Public Utilities face mask contest a couple of months ago. And his design was made into uh, real masks. Very cool. And um, here's a close up of Yoltsin's artwork. So he and his friends are high fiving the fact that they can once again go to restaurants and shopping malls. And he wrote that cool school named Edison Elementary. And Yoltsin looks forward to hanging out with his friends. Um, and I personally love the comic book style clap that's going on right there between the hands in the center of his painting. And um, the bright colors have such a happy mood. Thank you. Very good job, Yoltsin. And next we have Kendra. Congratulations to fifth grader Kendra from Roosevelt Elementary School. She drew a picture of herself with her friends. Let's take a closer look. And Kendra writes, I drew a picture of my friends and myself because I look forward to seeing them after the coronavirus because I miss them a lot. 
Kendra also wrote that she wanted to enter the contest because her brother's iPad was horribly cracked. And I did see a picture of it. She sent it. And um, Kendra said that she will surprise her brother with her new iPad. So good job, Kendra. And then uh, next we have Itzia. Uh, congratulations to fifth grader Itzia from Roosevelt Elementary School. And Itzia, Itzia painted a serene beach sunset with dolphins playing and jumping out of the sea. Um, she and her family had a trip planned to Hawaii last summer, but they had to cancel it because of COVID. And she wrote also that she will be giving away her iPad to someone who really needs it more than she does. Uh, thank you for creating this beautiful artwork, Itzia. And um, last but not least, we have Jaden. Congratulations to sixth grader Jaden from Franklin Elementary School, whose artwork about the San Diego Zoo won first place. And uh, Jaden wrote, after COVID, I would like to visit the San Diego Zoo. He has many fond memories being with his family at the zoo. He wants the viewer who's looking at his artwork to imagine the zoo and to hear the hungry monkeys and the chirping of the birds in the trees. Jaden's artwork immediately transports me to the zoo. Um, he was also the winner of the PTA Reflections Art Contest earlier this year. And in his statement, in his artist statement for the PTA Reflections Art Contest, Jaden wrote that he wanted to be a famous artist. So our partners at Anaheim Museo are working on getting Jaden his own art show there um, because he has such a large volume of artwork. Amazing work, Jaden. And once again, thank you to assembly member Tom Daly and his staff. Thank you to our teachers, our parents and our students for supporting all of our um, local uh, art contests. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Laura Houston. Uh, board members, would anyone like to make any remarks? Just thank you for sharing and allowing the students to express themselves in a variety of ways. It's always great to see that. Thank you. Thank you, board uh, trustee Alvarez, uh, trustee Relis. Yeah, thank you very much. And this was just super exciting. And I loved seeing all the talent that we have here in our district. And um, it's just a great outlet for them, you know, and just very therapeutic as well. So um, great job and just keep keep up this great work. Thank you. Go ahead. Uh, Dr. McAllis, go ahead, please. Yeah, I just want to say great job, everyone. I'm so proud of all of you. Uh, Laura, please tell the assemblymen uh, that uh, thank you for continuing to put on this art contest. All right, uh, board, thank you. Uh, board Clerk Felbeck, go ahead. Just, just to say thank you, Laura. It was a great presentation. I was reviewing it prior to the meeting and I was just so impressed with this artwork. I just, I was just looking at it going, I just can't hardly, hardly believe it. We have such talented students and um, just the, the usage and the colors and all the different ideas. It was, they're so amazing. So um, congratulations to all of them. And if uh, Jaden gets that uh, art show, I definitely want to go to that, see that. And thank you to Assemblyman, uh, Assembly Member Daly again for uh, providing this for us and doing this each year. So thank, thank you. you. And congratulations, everybody, every, all the kids. Thank you. Yes. Thank yep. you again. Uh, again, great job. Just to echo my colleagues. Um, I was actually taking some notes. I think I got some good ideas for after COVID too. So I'm looking forward to, uh, you know, there's very creative ideas there. So I think I've, I've got some of my vacation plans ready as well. So um, thank you for all the work that you've put into this. And again, uh, I want to thank all the teachers and the staff and, um, you know, our parents as well for helping to foster and nurturing uh, all of these creative abilities that they have, which I wish I had. Uh, but thank you so much for everything that you do. We all appreciate that. And just as a reminder for the public and for our parents, uh, the pre these presentations will be posted on the district website Board of Education page tomorrow. So you will be able to to view them, they'll be archived there. So thank you again. Uh, board uh, President, before yeah. we move on, I just wanted to take a moment to thank Laura Houston for your outstanding efforts uh, to keep our students with the opportunity to engage in the arts. Um, you've This is like the second or third presentation you've given us just in the past few months and it truly makes a difference. Uh, when we talk about social emotional learning, 
the arts are soothing and healing and comforting for our students. So thank you for your work and the work of all of our teachers. Thank you, Dr. Downing, and thank you, everyone. I, I love my job. I'm very lucky to do what I do. And we have some great things coming up too. So I'm really excited about that, that I'll show you. Um, you'll see in February and March. We will be looking forward to that then. Thank you very much. Uh, we're in suspense until that time. Uh, moving on to item five, five A, uh, we have item five news and updates, five A parent leadership group updates. Yes, we have a parent update su submitted by Barbara Navarrete, DAC DLAC secretary. The update reads, at our last DAC DLAC meeting on November 16, 2020, we had presentations on uniform complaint procedures and also were informed of the COVID student symptom decision tree presented by Leslie Coughlin. Tracy Golden went over the student safety plan. Dr. Downing shared the PTA reflection winners, free COVID testing dates and locations, and weekend meal service resources. We also held elections for our vice chair vacancy, which is now filled by Myra Reyes, parent leader from Ponderosa. We also had our DAC DLAC parent member training on November 30th at 2 p.m. Our next DAC DLAC meeting will be on Monday, January 25th at 5, at 2 p.m. And that concludes the update. Okay, thank you very much. Item 5B, association updates. There are no association updates tonight. Item 5C, district news and updates, communications and public information. There are no news and updates tonight. Item number six, public speakers. These are speakers on agenda or non-agenda items. There are no public speakers tonight. Item number seven, superintendents report and public hearings. There are superintendents reports and public hearings. And I'll read those from the agenda. Item 7A, it is recommended the Board of Education declare a public hearing for the purpose of receiving public comments on the dedication of a public utility easement to the city of Anaheim at Sunkist Elementary School. Uh, written comments up to 500 words may be submitted online via this form and must be received by 12 p.m. on Wednesday, January 20th, 2021. Are there any comments on this item? There are none. No comments on this item? Okay. Uh, go ahead, Dr. Downing. Oh, or okay. President, you, you will close the hearing. Okay, uh, public hearing is now closed. Item 7B, it is recommended the Board of Education adopt resolution 2020-21-36, granting an easement for public utility purposes to the city of Anaheim to facilitate the construction process at Sunkist Elementary School. As of January 8th, 2021, the notice of intent was posted for public review and published in the Orange County Register. As of December 26, 2020, pursuant to Education Code Section 17558, uh, the easement deed allows a city to enter the easement area for various purposes as listed in the easement deed. Is there a motion for this item? So moved. Rellis. Moved by Trustee Rellis. Second. Seconded by Dr. Magalis. Is there any discussion on this item? Seeing none, I had just, oh, go ahead, Dr. Magalis. McCollis, sorry. None? Okay. Uh, I had just one question uh, because I've noticed that we have several of these easements that are coming up. Do we anticipate there being any more in the future? And again, uh, do we anticipate, is this a permanent easement or is this just during the process of the construction? Uh, this is a permanent easement and it has to do with the backflow situation that I was explained in December at the last, the board meeting in December. And we can't foresee any future easements. Of course, it all dictated by the construction. So 
you know, in this situation, we didn't want to do an easement, but what happened was that the backflow, in order to function the way it's supposed to, and at uh, Sunkiss, it needed to be moved. And so now it needed access to city property. So of course they wanted us to kind of be in conjunction with them, you know, because it, it is part of their property and our property. So they could come in and take a look if they needed to shut off the water because it does feed into the, you know, the sewer system going into the city. Okay, thank you very much. Seeing no other microphones on, uh, we'll do the roll call vote. Dr. Magalis? Aye. Trustee Rellis? Aye. Trustee Alvarez? Aye. Clerk, uh, Board Clerk Philbeck? Aye. I also vote aye, passes 5-0. And these presentations will also be posted on our district website tomorrow. Item number eight, consent uh, calendar. Items listed under the consent calendar are considered to be routine and are acted on by the board in one motion. There's um, no discussion. Sorry, sorry, board president. Uh, we have item 7C. ND. Oh, sorry, ND. My apologies. Sorry, that was on the next page. I'm sorry about that. Uh, getting used to the virtual agenda and the tab. Item 7C, thank you. AESD dual language immersion, DLI program update. Maria Viegas, Director of Curriculum and Instruction. Magali Rodriguez, Curriculum uh, Specialist, DLI. Okay, I think I'm on here. I thought you were skipping me. <laughs> Good evening. It's a pleasure to be here providing a quick DLI update to everybody. So it's a pleasure to be here. Yay, Iris. Okay, we're going to start with our professional development update. Um, I just want to highlight um, a few items that are on here. This is not an exhaustive list by any means, but since it is an update at the last um, DLI update we presented, we really focused on two of the major platforms that we provided due to distance learning. And that the first one was iStation and the digital platform that iStation provided. Um, and again, this iStation was really to focus on individual needs of students. So it is student led and student adaptive. So we've been able to provide, um, I see it as a funnel. We started with a broad um, approach of iStation, the ins and outs and how it function at a larger scale. Um, and the same thing with Vista Higher Learning. Um, they were previously known as Descubre, which was by Santillana. They since sold the company and were taken over by a much larger um, company that had was able to do a lot more and they brought in their super site. So now it's Vista Higher Learning and really, again, another platform to provide access for our students from home. And so again, with these two items, we started on a larger scale and have since then been able to provide site-specific PD. So I really did see, like I mentioned, as a funnel or an inverted pyramid in which now we are meeting individually with sites very specific to their needs. Um, and then also with grade level specific teachers and coaches and then lastly, we're also providing what we're calling a redinging town hall meets. So we're providing just open meets where we're there as um, specialists, if you will, to answer questions. A lot of the times teachers have questions or they come in and see or hear questions that other educators have and we're able to support them that way. Of course, we're still available through email, through meets, on demand. Um, so that's been a very successful way to really get to meet the needs of each individual um, school and, and teacher, if you will. Okay, so we can go on to the next item. Okay, I'm very, very happy and excited to announce a new partnership that ASD has with not only the California Department of Education, but locally as well with the Orange County Department of Education in what we call the MCAP grant or the Multilingual California Project. It's a huge endeavor. Um, and we are very, very proud to be a part of it. So in short, we, we already know that multilingualism is really, it's rich, it's, it's everywhere in every, I was reading earlier, it's in every ounce, every corner, every classroom in, here in the state of California. And so really the goal of this grant, if you will, um, I may read just a, a snippet of this, is to strengthen the capacity of districts in dramatically accelerating the academic and multilingual opportunities and outcomes of English learners across California by taking an in-depth strategic development of the EL roadmap. So in short or in summary, what it really is, is taking the English learner roadmap, which is a very well thought out written path, if you will, 
um, in which our educators, our administrators, specialists, everybody can really infuse the classrooms with strategies that have been proven and that work and really focusing in on what a multilingual student is. And we're learning more and more of a shift from English learner, really looking at them as multilingual student. And we know that they are getting a, re a deeper or richer understanding that these students come with cultural and linguistic assets already and building based on that and ensuring that ultimately they reach English proficiency and high academic success. So that is ultimately the goal of this project. Um, and then as we move on to the next slide, we'll see the, the scope of the MCAP or the Multilingual California project. And it's over the course of three years, as most grants are, and it is really in a four-stage four stage model, if you will. So um, if we're not familiar, everybody on here with the English Learner Roadmap, it's really broken down into four main principles in which you approach um, English learners or uh, emergent bilinguals. And so the first stage in which we are currently in is the awareness. It's really building and focusing on principle one and two. And so if I didn't mention it already, the grant is really dissecting the English learner roadmap. And we're really going to um, look into it deep and how it applies specific, specifically um, at, at AESD and in our classrooms and specific schools. So awareness is really building on what does it say? What does it mean? How does it function? Um, stage two, is really the initial implementation. Now it's looking at, if you see in there, the innovations. How is it that we're going to provide innovations essentially are um, professional development that help form and apply the English learner roadmap within our district and within our classrooms. Stage three is then looking at a systematic implementation of principle three. And lastly, we have the sustainable or sus sustainability, which I really look at as sustainable implementation. So now that we've done the work, how do we continue it even after the grant is over, if you will, right? So it's really looking at what, what are the practices that we're going to implement that are sustained over the course of time and that prove to have impact in the academic success of our students. Okay, so we can move on to the next slide. So it, we call it, or it's being um, termed the MCAP Alliance and they dinged it this way, this way in Orange County Department of Education because it's, it's beyond just Anaheim or just beyond Orange County, but it's really looking at, at the state of California as a whole. And this is not a new initiative in the sense that we have been moving towards a more bilingual, multilingual, multilingual approach. Um, our district has obviously been leading the way in recognizing that early on and providing dual language at all of our school sites. But it's really beyond that in looking at our English learners, students that sit not only in our dual program, but also in our classrooms that are learning English as a second language. So there's counties and partners across the state of California. And we have identified specifically four of our own schools, Gwen, Henry, Lincoln, and Olive. Those are, that's, those are participating schools. Nobody calls it that except me, but that's what I just thought of right now. Participating school that we did that we're going to develop and further approach the the grant as we as we progress. So we're really excited. Again, we're in the awareness stage, but we're we're moving along um, nicely. Okay. Now, as far as teacher recruitment, um, we uh, we will be the last two years we have hosted. Um, what does dual language mean to us as the teachers that are sitting working for us right now? So the last couple of years. Um, we've just provided a forum for teachers to feel comfortable asking questions. We've had a lot more inquiries, if you will. Um, a lot last year we did have several of our English immersion. I was really trying to be phrase the, the word properly. English immersion teachers who chose to come and teach in a dual language setting, and we have ch been checking in with the teachers, providing support and. I've actually um, noted, I remember sending Dina a message because I was so excited that one of our teachers, um, she's like, this is the best decision I could have ever done. I'm so excited. I'm learning so much. And she's a veteran teacher. She's been with us for about 20 years. So it, it was exciting to hear. So we have more and more of those anecdotes coming in. So we feel strongly that by providing these platforms or forums where teachers could come and ask questions, and we always invite existing teachers that move from English immersion to dual immersion to come and just tell them the, the truth, right? What does it really look like? Or to squash those myths, as um, I like to think of it too, of what they've heard over the years. So um, we have three, three official dates slated, but I am always available to talk to anybody that wants to you know, pick my brain, et cetera, about what it's like to teach in a dual language setting.
Yes, I think that's all we have for today. I'll hand it over for any questions. Any questions, board members? Dr. McAuliffe? No questions. I just wanted to say great presentation. Always love hearing the updates with the dual language immersion program. Very proud. Thank you. Absolutely. I'm sure Mrs. Rodriguez is also accepting compliments if anybody else would like to. <laughs> great job. Jealous? Okay. Good job. I'll throw one in there, Magali. Thank you so much for all Thanks that so you do. Not just, you know, I mean, you're just... You're, you're a really great worker for us. Uh, you help so much and help so many families. And I always love to be at wherever you're at doing whatever that you're doing. And I kind of miss those opportunities since, you know, we're not out at the school. So, but it's, I always enjoy seeing you. And thank you so much for this presentation. It was really great. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm, I'm curious about where the M MCAP grant uh, uh, got sparked. Where did you find out about it? Uh, where did we get information from, for that? I'll, I'll take that one, Magali. Um, with our relationship with the Orange County Department of Ed and Kabe through the multinational um, training that was happening last year down in um, Chula Vista, I know some of our board members were able to attend and then go on a visit to some schools in Tijuana. Um, it, it sparked from there. So we're really excited and we have great relationships with uh, Dr. Nicole Chavez at the Orange County Department of Ed and our friends over at Kabe. So they always think of us first. Awesome. It's great to help our teachers build more capacity and build the community and help our students grow. So I appreciate everything you do. Thank you. And uh, thank you, Dr. Downing, for not letting me skip this item. Uh, it turned out to be very informative for all of us. We would never try to skip you, Magali. In fact, we want to hear more updates about how great our DLI program is. So in the future, we want to hear more invented terms, more things for us to to aspire to uh, as we're going forward during your presentation. So thank you very much for uh, updating us on that. We really appreciate it. And we will see you in a few months probably as well. So, all right, uh, moving on to item 7D. Governor's budget proposal uh, for 2021-22, Jesse Chavarria, Assistant Superintendent Administrative Services. Uh, good evening, Board President Lopez and Board of Trustees. As you recall, on Friday, January 8th, Governor Newsom presented his proposal for the 21-22 state budget. The governor's budget proposal paints a much better picture than the one presented to last May during his May revision. The state budget ha had a dramatic turnaround. It is about $16 billion ahead of what it was projected. And as you know, California relies heavily on tax revenues and in particular personal income taxes. Since many high earners have done well during this crisis, tax collections have been above projections. The increase in tax revenues has put the state in a much better economic situation uh, at this time. So due to this additional revenue increase, the governor, governor Newsom has made several proposals for 21-22 in terms of the state budget that may help our district budget for the next year. Uh, next slide, please. So one of these key uh, points in his uh, proposal is the cost of living adjustment. If you recall back in December when we came with uh, the first interim, um, we we presented to you the multi-year projection and at that time we said uh, we had a zero cola for 2021 as well as 21 22 and 22 23. at this time the governor's proposing uh instituting back again a 2.31 percent cola for 2021 but he's not providing any funding for this year we would see the 2.31 next year in conjunction with the proposed 1.5 uh, COLA for 21-22, meaning it would be a compounded COLA of 3.84% for us. Now, it is important to note that at this time, the statutory COLA of 3.84% that is being proposed only applies to LCFF revenues, meaning that special education funding as well as other state revenues would only get the 1.5% that is being proposed proposed for 21-22. Next slide, please. 
So what does this mean for us in terms of our budget? So looking at the LCFF COLA, so the 0.31% would not give us any additional funding for this year. But the compounded 3.84% for 21-22 would mean for us $6.6 .6 million in ongoing revenue. In terms of stirs and purse, because he did, uh, the governor did talk about that as well, there is no change. Uh, the proposal he mentioned is no different than that, what he had already agreed to give us. Uh, there was a slight change in terms of our projection. When we came in December in that first interim, we were making the assumption that the STRS rate would be 16.15%, but what the governor's proposing is a 15.92% that we would be responsible for, meaning that we would see a reduction in 21-22 of $76,000 over our contribution that we're responsible for of $684,000. And also ESSER two funds, this is the stimulus that was, uh, that's coming from the federal go government uh, that was approved in December. We're expecting to see about $19.5 million uh, in 2021. And this is one time funding to be used over the course of the next two years. It needs to be spent or committed by September 30th of 2022. So total additional revenue for us in 2021 would be the $19.5 million from ESSER II, those federal federal monies. And from 21-22, about $6.7 million in additional revenue if the governor's proposal comes to fruition. Next slide, please. In regards to deferrals, the governor did mention he would pay two thirds of the deferrals and one third the following year. Uh, everyone was excited, but it, but the fact remains that he would still pay them during the timeline that was proposed before. So we are still dealing with the cash flow situation, right? So next month, the, the deferrals begin. Instead of seeing 9% of our LCFF funds that we typically get in February, we're only going to see 5%. And then in uh, March, April, and May, we're going to see about 3% of that each month. And then in June, it's zero. So that means we have to internally address that cash flow so that our employees can get paid monthly. And then the last one third, like it was mentioned, he's talking about that deferral would take place in June of 2022, and he would pay it in July of 2022 as well. Next slide, please. So additional funding to be determined, there's no uh, set amounts because this is still being talked through, but extending learning time, he has proposed $4.6 billion in terms of adding uh, more time during the school day or summer school and or in other forms in order to address learning loss. And that would be an amount that we would receive in 21-22. Safe reopening of schools. He has proposed $2 billion for those districts that open in either February or March, right? An amount to be determined because there is an, a grant application either that's due February 1st or March 1st, and depending on your application, that's a set amount that you would be allocated. And then in terms of special education, early intervention grant, this is for three, four, and five-year-olds uh, that are special needs, $300 million in ongoing funds. And so that's to be determined in terms of what we will be allocated. And teacher professional development and preparation, various amounts. Uh, this is to support teachers as well as to build a, you know, additional teachers to enter the profession as well. Next slide, please. So what are some next steps for us? We need to monitor revenue and expenditures, project enrollment and staffing for next year, prepare second interim and present it to you in March, uh, assess the governor's May revision in May, and continue working on the 21-22 budget to be presented in June. I do want to conclude, though, that the that although the state budget has drastically improved, the governor did a caution that the state is projecting a structural deficit beginning in 22-23 and going through 24-25 that will grow to about $11 billion. This is important for us because as, as a district, we're also concerned with the deep impact that we're going to face due to the whole harmless clause that expires at the end of 21-22. And we feel that the state's potential deficit 
could add to our budget concerns even more than we are anticipating. Next slide, please. So I'll open it up to any questions that you may have regarding this, um, the governor's uh, proposal for the state budget for next year. Are any questions, uh, Trustee McAllis? Okay, Trustee Rellis, any questions, concerns, question, uh, comments? Uh, Trustee Alvarez and Trustee Philbeck. All right, well, great job. Uh, thank you for being uh, the bearer of, of some good and, well, I guess it was mixed news, but uh, thank you very much for, uh, for letting us know in advance. So thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chavarria. Now we will move on to item number eight, the consent calendar. We'll try this again. Uh, items listed under the consent calendar are considered to be routine and are acted on by the board in one motion. There's no discussion of these items unless a member of the board, staff, or the public requests specific items to be discussed and or removed from the consent calendar. Are there any items you wish to pull Trustee McAllis? Trustee Alvarez, uh, we'll go tr Trustee Ruelas. Trustee Alvarez uh, and board clerk Philbeck. Item 8B3, it's on the bottom of page five, please. Okay, we will pull item 8B3 from the agenda. Uh, it is recommended the Board of Education approve the following consent calendar items with the exception of item 8B3, which was pulled and will be voted on separately. Is there a motion for the balance? So moved. Relis. Moved by uh, Trustee Relis. Second. Second. Go ahead and take it. Seconded by Dr. McAllis. Any other discussion? We'll do a roll call vote. Uh, Trustee McAllis? Aye. Trustee Rellis? Aye. Trustee Alvarez? Aye. At Board Clerk Philbeck? Sorry, aye. Okay, I also vote aye, passes 5 0. We will now vote on the pulled item 8B3 from the agenda. On page six, it is recommended the Board of Education approve an amendment to an independent contractor agreement between this district and the Anaheim Family YMCA, 240 South Euclid Street, Anaheim, California, 92805, to extend the child care for 165 students in the Anaheim Achieves All Day program to accommodate families in need due to the COVID-19 pandemic through June 2021. Priority will be given to families of essential workers and students identified as foster youth and homeless. Original Agreement was approved at the October 14th, 2020 board meeting for $182,820. The fee for this service shall remain the same. Is there a motion for this item? So moved. Relis. Moved by Trustee Relis. I'll second it, Alvarez. Thank you. Seconded by Trustee Alvarez. Any discussion? This is just to remain consist consistent with my previous voting as I serve on the board of the YMCA. So I'll be offering an abstention. No other discussion or comment from me. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, uh, Board Clerk Philbeck. Seeing no other microphones on, uh, we will take a roll call vote. Trustee McAllis. Aye. Trustee Relis. Aye. Trustee Alvarez. Aye. Board or. Uh, and I also vote aye, uh, so that passes 4-0 with one abstention. Thank you. Thank you. Item, uh, moving on to item, oops, let me scroll down on my agenda. Are we on 9D2, uh, Dr. Downing? 9, uh, 9A1. Oh, sorry, 9A1. Yes. It's page President 13, Light. Trustee Lope, uh, President, Mr. President. It's kind of. Thank you. Yeah, sorry, I just got there. Thank you, uh, Dr. McAllis, oh. Superintendent's Office. Uh, 9A1, it is recommended the Board of Education adopt resolution number 2020 uh, 
321-32, declaring the month of January 2021 as the school board recognition month throughout the Anaheim Elementary School District. Is there a motion for this item? So moved. <laughs> Second. Uh, seconded by Trustee Rellis. Any discussion? Is this new? I've yeah, never I, I don't remember ever having this done before. And if we haven't, why not? Like, <laughs> I, we might have. There was, was this last year, Dr. Grace. Did we? Do you recall? I think it was a new thing they started last year. I thought, yeah, I think it was last year. I don't remember really what evolved or how we were recognized or anything, but I think it was um, last year. So cool. Yeah, it was great. Well, it's well deserved. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Uh, if there's no other discussion, I was trying not to be too eager to get to this item, just so everybody knows. That's what. Are I you was, kidding me? I was like, this is like my motivation for tonight. I'm super pumped. <laughs> 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 I just want to say, cool. <laughs> proud to yeah, be with the board to be recognized for this first celebration. So. <laughs> All right. So it sounds like this is the first one. It won't be the last uh, time that we have our board uh, of education uh, recognition month. Okay. So we have a motion and a second. Uh, we'll no other discussion. We'll take a roll call vote. Uh, Dr. McCallis, aye. Trustee Relis, aye. <laughs> Trustee Alvarez, aye. Board Clerk Philbeck, aye. I also I also vote aye. Passes five zero. On to item nine a two. It is recommended the Board of Education receive the first reading revisions to the following board policies and administrative regulations. BP6173, Education for Homeless Children, AR6173, Education for Homeless Children, and E6173, Education for Homeless Children. Is there a motion for this item? So moved, Alvarez. Moved by Trustee Alvarez. Second, Rellis. Seconded by Trustee Rellis. Any discussion? Seeing none, uh, we'll do a roll call vote. Uh, Dr. McCallis. Aye. Trustee Rellis. Aye. Trustee Alvarez. Aye. Clerk Philbeck. Aye. I also vote aye. Passes 5-0. Moving on to uh, item 9B1, educational services. It is recommended the Board of Education adopt resolution number 2020-21-33, declaring the month of February as Make Kindness Contagious Month. Is there a motion? So moved. Second, okay. Phil Beck. All right. Moved by uh, Dr. McCallis and seconded by Clerk Phil Beck. Any discussion? Seeing none, uh, we'll do a roll call vote. Dr. McCallis? Aye. Uh, Trustee Rellis? Aye. Trustee Alvarez? Aye. Board Clerk Phil Beck? Aye. Also vote aye. Passes 5-0. Moving on to item 9B2, is recommended the Board of Education adopt resolution number 2020-21-34 in support of Read Across America 2021, scheduled for March 2nd, 2021. So move, Phil Beck. Sorry, I jumped. I didn't wait for you to call that. I apologize. No, that's okay. My screen just went dark for a second. So you actually, that was perfect timing to help me stall. <laughs> Uh, so moved by Clerk <laughs> Philbeck. Rellis. Seconded by Rellis. Any discussion? Um, will we have a virtual possibility to read? I really miss reading to the students during this day. Uh, yes, we will be able to do that. And uh, teachers will be able to send you team invites directly. So we will awesome. coordinate that. Thank you, Dr. Downey. Sign us up. Sign us up. Yeah, that's exciting. That's one of my favorite times of the whole year. Um, it has been for six years. So excited to hear that we'll still get to have some kind of participation in it. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you for bringing that up, uh, Dr. McCallis. Uh, something we all look forward to. Uh, roll call vote. Dr. McCallis? Aye. Trustee Rellis? Aye. Trustee Alvarez? Aye. Board Clerk Silbeck? Aye. Also vote aye, passes 5-0. Item 9C, SELPA. There are no items. Item 9D, human resources. 
Number one, it is recommended the Board of Education adopt resolution number 2020-21-35 regarding the layoff of a classified management employee for the 2020-21 school year, effective March 31st, 2021. Is there a motion? So moved. Rellis. Rellis. Second. Seconded by Board Clerk Philbeck. Any discussion? I believe that was no, uh, that was Dr. Gallus. Gallus. That oh. second. I'm sorry about that. Let's go ahead. Uh, seconded by Dr. McCallis. Any discussion? Yeah. Okay. No discussion. Okay. Roll call vote. Dr. McCallis. Aye. Trustee Rellis. Aye. Trustee Alvarez. Aye. Board Clerk Philbeck. Aye. Also vote aye, passes 5-0. Item 9-D-2, it is recommended the Board of Education approve the appointment of employee number 012-02-021-01 to the position of coordinator of multilingual language instruction programs effective January 21st, 2021. Is there a motion? So moved, Rellis. Second. Seconded by Trustee Alvarez. Any discussion? Seeing none, uh, roll call vote, uh, Dr. McCallis. Aye. Oh, thank you. Uh, Trustee Rellis. Aye. Uh, Trustee Alvarez. Aye. Board Clerk Philbeck. Aye. I also vote aye, passes 5-0. Ms. Mellon, will you please... Uh, Make an announcement for us? Yes, I most certainly will, thank you. I am very pleased to congratulate Magali Rodriguez. Magali currently serves AESD students as the dual language immersion curriculum specialist. Since 2005, she has also worked in AESD as a classroom teacher and teacher on special assignment professional development. Congratulations to Macaulay as she transitions to this new role as coordinator of multilingual language instruction programs beginning tomorrow. All right, congratulations, Magali. All right, moving on to item 9D3, it is recommended the Board of Education approve the revised job description for Director of Transportation. This position shall be on range 29 of the classified management salary schedule. Is there a motion? So moved, Rellis. Second, Alvarez. So moved by Trustee Re uh, Rellis. Seconded by Trustee Alvarez. Any discussion? Seeing none, roll call vote. Dr. McCallis? Aye. Trustee Rellis? Aye. Trustee Alvarez? Aye. Board Clerk Philbeck? Aye. Also vote aye. Passes 5 0. On to item 9E Administrative Services. There are no items. Item number 10, board discussion, board member activities related to school business. We will begin with Dr. Paolo McCallis. All right. Hey, everyone. I hope you had a wonderful uh, holiday uh, break. Um, since our last board meeting, uh, I did participate in a few things. Um, there was also a toy drive uh, hosted by Access California. Uh, it's a community organization in West Anaheim. Uh, I met the director, Amira Basmaji, uh, and she actually also, sh you know, showed me the, the site. It was really cool. Uh, we do have some of our students who do, uh, for the families who, you know, need help with virtual learning, uh, they do go there for assistance, and uh, they just do great things in the West Anaheim community. Uh, I also attended uh, Pandorosa's uh, third and fourth grade uh, curriculum distribution. Uh, I want to give props to Leticia, one of our classified employees, uh, and two other staff members that were just great in, you know, making sure that all the students were distanced, that it, it ran smoothly. So great job. Um, I also went to Stoddard for their second grade uh, awards uh, assembly. It was all virtual. 
a great job, Principal Hadley, for organizing that. We were literally going to a variety of different uh, rooms as uh, we were watching the, the second graders get their awards. Uh, so great job to all the second graders. Um, and real quick, I just want to share that uh, uh, I was blessed and privileged to actually visit family in Hawaii during this break. And uh, when I first served uh, on the school board, I talked about their immersion program over there. And, uh, you know, four years later, all four of their kids are in DLI. And uh, this is really, uh, I don't know if you could see, this is one of my nieces doing virtual learning in native Hawaiian. Uh, and I just want to say that I did spend two of those days helping out my cousin, uh, literally watching her four students uh, you know, do distance learning, cooking breakfast, and oh my goodness, just to be able to manage that, like it was so hard. So mad prop to the families out there and teachers who have uh, kids and the, you know, them having a balance, you know, teaching, working, and just a variety of things. It is hard, y'all. It is so hard. And, um, and also it brings up another thing that I uh, saw yesterday uh, uh, or this morning, uh, Horace Mann, uh, Horace Mann, uh, they did have a DLI sibling meeting that I attended. Louis Magdaleno, great job. Uh, I love that our families have priorities when it comes to, um, you know, their siblings. It, it's not just for one student. It's an entire family thing. My family in Hawaii, they all speak native Hawaiian. They preserve their language. Their grandma who watches the kids every week also are learning native H Hawaiian. So it is just a beautiful program. And it, I'm just uh, proud of Louis for that presentation uh, at Horace Mann and uh, Magali and just all of our great things that are happening with dual language immersion. And that concludes my report. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Dr. Magalis. Uh, letting us live vicariously through you. Great. Uh, Trustee Rellis, uh, go ahead. <clears throat> yeah, well, Happy New Year, everyone, and Happy Inauguration Day. Very exciting. Um, I haven't checked out CNN recently, so I don't know if there's been any, hopefully it's been peaceful and everything like that, as opposed to the horrific events and embarrassing events that took place last week in our nation's capital. Um, but... Um, to talk about some of the things I've been involved in, um, I do want to say that I've been involved with things that have been just primarily focused on the um, the bilingual ambassador grant that we received again for the second year. Um, last year, or last year, last week, um, I went over and attended a meeting over a parent meeting at Lincoln Elementary School, um, which was well attended. And that was fantastic and was able to just give them a shout out and all the great things that uh, Mr. Calderon from Anaheim High School um, is facilitating along with his fantastic team of the high school bilingual ambassadors. And um, today I was able to um, attend and give the opening kind of remarks of the student participants from Juarez and from Lincoln and from Price. Um, and uh, it was it was just great. It was super exciting to see some of the returners uh, that have come in, et cetera. Um, the cool thing is, is that whatever funds we do not spend, it's not a use it or lose it kind of thing. Um, it was able to still carry over again next year, which is going to be fantastic for us. Um, and considering we still have um, some additional funds from last year, which we still need to tap into. Um, so we're excited about that. And uh, we're excited about the endless possibilities. I know that um, uh, Trustee Alvarez uh, and I had had some discussions about it possibly continuing and extending to the junior high level as well. Um, and that is still definitely something we want um, to see happen. Uh, just lots of possibilities, but it's been a really, really great um, and meaningful um, grant so far that's really connected um, uh, AESD and AUHSD, especially those involved in DLI um, that much more. Um, I do just want to give a quick shout out to Susie uh, Taveras, uh, a teacher over at Price, Carla Garcia, um, and Paolo Robles, uh, two teachers over at Lincoln, uh, Adriana Sierra and Rebecca Poole, uh, two teachers over at Juarez, as well as the vice principals from Lincoln and Price, uh, vice principal Misty Gomez, as well as vice principal, uh, Becky Doherty. Um, they were there this evening. And once again, they're volunteering their time to participate in this. And these, this program wouldn't 
be possible if it wasn't for their support as well. So I do just want to give all of them a shout out. Okay. And then um, the final thing I do just want to address uh, this evening. And, um, you know, it, it, I, I bring it up just because of the fact that uh, he was an employee of our district and I broached it at our last meeting. Um, and I just wanted to share with all of you, uh, as I mentioned, uh, since December 7th, one of our former employees from uh, AESD who worked here for many, many years. Uh, Dr. Grace, do you remember how long Mr. Saldivar, Roberto Saldivar worked in dis our district? Uh, more than 20. I remember that. So he's a long time yeah. employee. And he had just recently retired um, a few years back. Um, he, has, he had been in a coma since December 7th um after uh um, falling off of a ladder and sustaining head injuries um i just wanted to let everybody know if you have not heard yet um that this past saturday he did pass away um and so uh we will send whatever information we get um to the district office for those employees that still remember him and and you know would are interested in attending whatever memorial service they end up having okay and um and that pretty much concludes my report. All right. Thank you, Trustee Rellis. Uh, Trustee Alvarez. Hey, everybody. Um, I want to start off with kind of extending the sentiment of Dr. McAuliffe, um, just from the perspective of a parent in our district, um, the amount of energy that's being put into having our children learn and grow during distance learning is beyond um, comprehension. I have a five-year-old in Ms. Villarreal's class at Horace Mann uh, who has uh, gets help from uh, Ms. Diana. That's all I know her by, but hearing through a microphone. Um, my son's learning Spanish. It, he's five years old. And it's phenomenal to see his growth. So we're doing this over the computer. He sits at a counter in the kitchen and gets on every day, sometimes reluctantly, but gets on there. And they learn and they grow and they do art and they sing, and they dance, and they talk. They do all of these things through the computer. Just the, the mere human interaction alone, I think is um, crucial to keeping our kids moving forward and growing. And um, our teachers are just doing a phenomenal job. And I don't think we as a society are placing enough credit on these individuals who every day sit for hours and hours and plan strategically how they're gonna allow our children to grow, grow and flourish as individuals. And so I think we, we need to take a, like a step back as a society and just think, wow, teachers, administrators, instructional assistants, everyone who's behind the scenes making these classes function and run, they're all heroes. And we talk, we talk about like, quote, learning loss. I don't see any learning loss. I'm, I'm seeing gain, right? Even through this tough time, there's still gain happening. And so we need, we need to give ourselves credit for the, the phenomenal job that we're, uh, that we're doing as a district. And every teacher here, every instructional aide here needs a pat on the back and like $5 million and some flowers and some chocolate and a coffee from Starbucks um, every day because they deserve that. So just from my uh, point of view, as a dad seeing my five-year-old grow, and I know I know he's not gonna, he's not going to be, uh, out of the loop when he's in first grade, he's gonna be fine, right? So it's just uh, thank you to everyone out there working on our children. And I just wanna extend uh, my thank you to everyone uh, who's reached out to me based on the news that we found about my brothers in the last couple of weeks. Uh, the community has been uh, incredibly supportive and it's been heartwarming to get um, feedback from everybody, phone calls, uh, cards, flowers, uh, little tokens of love from different corners of the community just to keep us going. So we, I really do want to uh, extend our love from the Alvarez family and for the support that we've been getting lately. So thank you, everybody. That's my report. Thank you, Trustee Alvarez, uh, for that perspective and, and for your words as well. Um, board Clerk, fill back. Yes, uh, and my condolences to your family. Uh, Mr. Alvarez, you know, we've all been thinking of you and you've been in our thoughts and prayers. So um, I will say that I did attend the PTA council meeting, which I those the PTA, our PTA people are like the energizer bunny. They, no matter what obstacles, you know, they just keep going and they just keep 
finding those ways to keep our programs, their programs in place and to keep parents involved and informed. And so thank you so much to not only our PTA council, but all of our individual PTAs at the schools that are still really trying to keep things running and you know pull their memberships in. It's, it's, it hasn't been an easy school year to try to do a lot of this and yet they don't give up, they just keep going. So thank you so much. And um, as some of the other board members said, yes, thank you so much to all of our teachers, all of our employees, our cabinet, everybody, you know, Dr. Downing, everybody that is keeping us up and running month after month after month after month. Um, it's just so, we're so grateful for all of the effort that is put in to keep this amazing district what it is, which is amazing. Um, I, I will mention the YMCA virtual breakfast because John Dalem was the speaker for that. And a lot of, there are a lot of people in this community, um, teachers, parents, uh, myself included, that had Coach Dalem as a teacher at Loera many years ago. Did you, uh, Dr. McGalls, did, did you have him also as a teacher? He was my principal. He was your principal. Okay. He was my, I believe, psychology uh, teacher, but he also ran the wrestling program. Uh, and there are just so many people that know him from that. And he is a mountain climber, climbs mountains all over the world. Great motivational speaker. And you just couldn't believe all of the people that signed in, um, you know, that had some that from Luera back in the day and even, you know, uh, present day. So that was really uh, fun to hear. I, <clears throat> I have been signing on to NAM, the NAM week. And uh, I did have a little trouble getting onto the very first activity. So thank you, Janice, because Janice always just pulls me out of the pit when I have uh, connection problems or whatever. I'm just texting her and she, you know, works it. So I got in a little late, but it's it was the original, you know, opening ceremony where I did get to see John, um, you know, do some of the, the dance. And I really miss being on site at the schools and having the NAM days. But I have been signing in and listening to some of the projects. Um, I listened to a music project management uh, course, sort of speak, and also uh, informational uh, webinar on developing the successful guitar class, just because, you know, they're interesting and I kind of wanted to see where this is coming from. But as far as the live virtual performances, I saw a harmonica player today, uh, G. Yai He, who was absolutely amazing. This guy could play the harmonica and do waltzes and anything you, you know, you could, anything you could sing to or waltzes. He was great. But um, the thing that I was most impressed with in music, I mean, the, NAM is so great for us and being partners with us. There's a guy named Dan uh, Tepfler, and he was playing a Yamaha piano, and Yamaha is another one of our partners that we're so grateful to have, uh, especially during the NAM week. And I have toured the Yamaha facility, and it's just amazing. But this guy was playing uh, an, ac an acoustic piano, which is a piano that will play by itself that can be programmed to play on its own. But what was so phenomenal, what I one of the most fantastic things I've ever seen in six years through attending NAM was this guy has written programs into this piano. So the piano can decide how it wants to respond to his improvisation. And he gave examples. I mean, he would be playing the piano, totally improvising and pick his hands up and the piano is still going because it's responding to how he's improvising. I've never seen anything like it. It was absolutely amazing. And then you could even see there was a visual of his playing were like white dots and the response from the piano were braided red chords. It was, I wish we had a piano like that. Um, it would be so fun, but it was absolutely amazing what was being done. Um, I listened to Fuzz Band. Don't know if anybody's ever heard of that, but it's kind of fun. They're out of Virginia and a guitarist. So um, I, like I said, I, I appreciate NAM so much for their contribution and donation to us and uh, for everything that they do. And it's sad that we can't all be together this year, but we will, I'm sure next year. So with that, I would just like to say, um, Mr. Lopez, you did a great job this evening, really great job. So thank you for um, taking us through this meeting and to everyone else, our numbers are still really high. 
please wear masks. Please stay safe. Um, I think we all pretty much know someone who um, has that COVID has dealt a really bad blow to. And so we just need to keep, we need to stay, stay on course and keep doing what we're doing. And hopefully that will enable us to get back together sooner than later. So, um, and again, congratulations to all of the uh, art winners for their, their uh, participation and also for their amazing drawings. So thank you. And I appreciate you listening. Thank you, board clerk Phil Beck. Uh, I, I couldn't run the meeting without you guys. So um, I appreciate that helping me to facilitate the meeting. Uh, I promise next time we'll try to be a little more punctual. Uh, I miss it by just a minute. So we'll, we'll get it next time uh, together. Uh, I wanted to just make a couple of announcements. Thank you, board clerk Phil Beck, also for reminding me about NAM uh, and attempting to get there. I was able to deliver some remarks on, uh, uh, on that Friday. Uh, I know Trustee Rellis uh, was also present for that meeting, uh, just the introductory remarks. And Dr. Downing did a great job of um, of the, our, ta our tag team uh, introduction. So thank you, Dr. Downing, for helping us out with that as well. Um, also just wanted to report that speaking of COVID, I did take a second COVID test just in case, just out of an abundance of caution uh, last Friday. I got my results were returned back to me within two days. Uh, it's very important uh, that just for contact tracing, um, knowing what our case count is, that, that uh, if you feel like you may have been exposed. I just want to remind our community, our parents, our staff to take advantage of the resources that we have here in Anaheim. Um, we have drive through and also just kind of stop and go kind of uh, testing centers. Um, I did have a meeting today with some of the Thomas Jefferson staff, uh, which I felt was just a nice opportunity to kind of have a meet and greet with them. Um, which I would prefer to be in person as we all do with all of our meetings, but uh, that's just the reality that we're in now. Uh, and uh, I did remind them of, of our resources for our staff that we have. So hopefully they take advantage of that. Uh, it was a good um, cordial meeting. Um, they were very appreciative of it. Uh, I appreciated their time. This was after school. Um, so most of the staff was able to make it. Uh, it was an optional meeting, but uh, I think it was just uh, very indicative of the fact that we still want to stay connected to each other. And uh, that's something that I've I've committed that I want to try to meet with uh, all of my my sites and, and all the sites in the district on a more regular basis because uh, we have the resource here and the tools of technology that we should just take advantage of and be able to reach out. And even if we can't uh, physically be uh, close to one another, uh, we, we can still reach out, uh, whether it's uh, through text or it's Google Meets or any of the other resources at our disposal. So um, that uh, is the first of many uh, that I'm planning to do. So um, I want to Thank the staff there for coordinating that. Thank you, Dr. Downing and your staff for helping to, to set some of these meetings up. I appreciate that. Um, with that, I will conclude my remarks on my um, board comments. Uh, before we adjourn, are there any future agenda items? Uh, Dr. McCallis, Trustee Rellis, any future agenda items? Nope. All right, Trustee Alvarez. Board Clerk Philbeck. Yes, um, Mr. Lopez, I'd like to ask that you consider agendizing a pledge. Uh, this came to me through our music program curriculum specialist, Mark Anderson, and it's called The Arts Are Education. Uh, the pledge asserts that the arts are part of a balanced education and asks signees to commit to supporting equitable access to arts education that includes instruction in all arts areas and anyone or any organization can sign it. And it was put to me, I've already signed it personally. I'd like to ask the board to consider allowing this on an agenda for us to support it as it's called the Arts Are Education Pledge. And I believe um, Mr. Anderson uh, obtained this through the NAM programming. Okay. So. Uh, I did see Dr. Downing making a note, so I assume uh, we will have it on a future agenda as soon as practical. Yes. Thank you. <clears throat> we will follow up. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Dr. Downing. Uh, before we adjourn this evening, I would like to ask that we have a moment of silence in remembrance of Nestor Daniel Alvarez and Bulmaro Alvarez Jr., the brothers of trustee Juan Gabriel Alvarez. 
Our hearts go out to the entire Alvarez family, uh, also to the Saldivar family and to everyone who has had a family member or a loved one pass during this pandemic. So please join me in a moment of silence, if you would. All right, thank you very much. Our next regular board meeting is Wednesday, February 3rd. I now adjourn this meeting at 7.53 p.m. Thank you, everyone. Good night, everyone. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night.